What's up gamers? Pro Warriors here. Imagine turning your Android phone into a full-blown desktop that runs Windows apps and Linux tools. Sounds impossible, right? Well, that's exactly what Exodus does. But here's the game changer unlike WinLater or GameHub, which only run Windows environments. Exodus isn't just about Windows or Linux. It also packs in console emulators like PS1, PSP, and Xbox all inside a single app. It actually supports and runs other emulators within itself, making it the ultimate all-in-one powerhouse for gaming and productivity. The Exodus developers are highly aggressive and consistent in their mission to bring full Windows and Linux environments to Android. In this new update, they've polished the UI for a smoother experience, boosted performance for faster operation, improved compatibility to support more apps and games, and enhanced graphics for better visuals and gameplay. Alongside these upgrades, a series of bug fixes and stability improvements make the emulator more reliable than ever. Whether you want to play classic PC games, use desktop software, or experiment with Linux development tools, Xodus makes it all possible right from your Android device. Let's start with the installation process. Scroll down to the releases section. It'll take you to another page. Keep scrolling until you see the assets. Download the Zotos emulator. While I'm making this video, version 5.9.0 is the latest one. Here are two versions of Exodos. ARM64 is for Android devices with 64-bit ARM processors like most modern Snapdragon, MediaTek, and Exynos phones while Prout provides the Linux or Windows system environment, allowing the emulator to run without root. So download the APK, and it depending on your internet speed, it might take a little while. Once the download is complete, install the app. You might get a warning that the app continue or not, but this is just a Google Play warning because it's an unknown app not from the Play Store. And you're done, it's installed. When you launch the app again, it will ask for permissions like storage access and notifications. Grant them, and it will start downloading some system files. If the app crashes afterward, just reopen it. Before you click Start, let's tweak a few settings. Tap on Preferences, and a menu will open. If you've already used Exodos, you may have noticed that the UI interface has been changed and is now much better organized. Previously, it was quite weird and not very user-friendly. Open the Output tab to customize the screen resolution. Select Exact and choose the lowest resolution. You can go up to 4K, but I prefer to use the native resolution. Of course, this depends on your device's specs. Enable Adjust the Set Screen Resolution. If Stretch to Fit Display and Full Screen are already enabled, you can move to the pointer settings. Here, under Touch Screen Method, you have options like Trackpad, Simulated Touch Screen, and Direct Touch. There are also other options such as Speed Factor and Sensitivity. In the Keyboard tab, make sure to disable Show Additional Keyboard, then move on to the other settings. Also, enable the Enable Floating Menu option. This creates a floating icon on your screen with many helpful tools. Since regular Android buttons don't work well in this emulator, this icon becomes your main control hub. Now head over to the Controller settings, where you can enable on-screen controls similar to what you'd find in WinLater or GameHub. After that, check the Wine settings. Here you can choose between GlyBC or Bionic, and configure DXVK, the driver package, and the CPU cores to optimize performance. Let me explain what each floating button does. Tap the gear icon to open or close configuration settings. The top icon opens the Linux terminal, showing system info like your Android version, Xodos version, Linux kernel, and more. You can even enter commands. The monitor icon with an X closes the current desktop. The keyboard icon activates the keyboard. Tap it, then press your phone's back button to use it. To disable, just tap the icon again. The gamepad icon enables touch controls for games, just like WinLater. The graph icon opens the task manager. And yes, for those who doubted, Termux is actually running in the background. When you click Start, here you'll see the full Exodus desktop interface. It includes apps like Exodus, Kali Linux, WineGlib, WineBionic, Xbox, PS1, PSP, Bionic, Termux, Settings, AI Tools, and several others. Not all apps are working right now, but a few are performing very well, and soon all apps will be fully functional. Let's try out Exodos by simply clicking on the first Exodos icon. Once you do that, it will ask you to select a graphics wrapper. If you're using a Snapdragon device, go ahead and choose the Turnup driver. For users with MediaTek, Exynos, or Mali processors, select the Vulkan option instead. After that, you'll be prompted to choose a rendering mode based on your needs CPU for better stability, hardware for higher speed, or VGL if you want full Linux desktop compatibility. Once you've made your selections, the complete Exodus environment will launch automatically no extra tweaks needed. Here in the Start menu, you'll find all the applications and settings just like on a real Linux PC. 
Xodos gives you that familiar desktop experience right on your Android device. It also includes its own app store, where you can browse and install popular software such as Blender, Mozilla Firefox, and many others. Whether you need creative tools, browsers, or system utilities, the XODOS App Store has a wide selection to enhance your productivity and experience. Let's try out the other emulators included in XODOS. We all know that Xbox emulators don't officially exist for Android, so if XODOS could run Xbox emulator, that would be a total game changer. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for now. But hey, no worries. Let's move on to the PS1 emulator, and yes, it's working perfectly. Next, I tested Winlater's Bionic inside Exodos, and oh wow, it actually works. Can you believe it? Now let's try PSP. And yes, PPSSPP is running smoothly right inside the Exodos environment. I absolutely love it. In conclusion, I'd say Exodos has great potential, but it still needs massive development and optimization to become a truly stable and reliable emulator. But the foundation is there, and it's exciting to see where it's headed. Exodos still has a few bugs and some UI-related issues, so it's not perfect just yet. I'm especially excited to see if future updates will make the Xbox emulator fully functional inside Exodos definitely something I'll be keeping an eye on. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel for more emulator content and Android tips. Thanks for watching and take care.